Good morning, dear friends. Oh, yes, what a joy it is for us to be together again for these few moments of meditation. Uh, the Lord has given us another day to live and glorify His name. We need His wisdom. We need His direction. We need His word. And so let us come around 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 14. Today's meditation is centered around this passage. Let me read this passage for you. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 14. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Oh, may the Holy Spirit enlighten us and bless his wonderful word to our hearts. Now, the title of today's meditation will be Speed Up the Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This passage speaks to us directly. If uh, we are people who are looking forward to the soon coming and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, what manner of people we ought to be? How should we live? That is the question. And let us find the answer in this passage. We need to give this subject a very serious consideration. Number one, how should we live in view of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? That is the question. The first thing is, we must live holy and godly lives. In this wicked world. Now it means all our behavior must be holy and godly. Why such a stress on godliness and godliness? One strong reason is given. Answer this question. The heavens are to be dissolved. Why? Because of sin and evil. Sin and evil of man have corrupted the world beyond repairs. That we understand from God's word. Because of sin and evil. It, it is to be, the, 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 the present heaven and earth needs to be dissolved. Sin and evil of man have corrupted the world beyond repairs. God will be forced to destroy the world because of our sin and evil. Sin and evil are therefore terrible thing. They must be hated and despised and rejected by every man and woman, and boy and girl, and young and elderly. For this reason, the stress is laid on holiness and godliness, which are the opposite of a sin and evil. Holy means our behavior is sanctified, set apart unto God, separated from the world and given over to God. And secondly, godly means live like God would live if he were among us. Godliness is Christ-likeness. 
And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, He says there, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. You see that is the ultimate plan and purpose of God for you and for me. To change us and keep on changing us and keep on changing us and transforming us until the very likeness of God, Jesus Christ, God's son, is implanted in us. And what a purpose of God. And then again in Titus chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 says Titus 2 12 and 13 it says here um, it teaches us that is the grace of God the grace of God which saved us because the, unless the grace of God had not been uh, uh, revealed to us or given us, we would not have come to Jesus. So the grace that saves us, it says it teaches us today to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And therefore, God has given us the grace to, to change us and to bring us to a point where his son's likeness is within us. And that is the purpose of God. So holiness means our behavior is sanctified, set apart unto God, separated from the world, and give over to God. Now godly means live like God would live if he were among us. And now the second thought is in verse 12. Believers have a vital role to play to bring the day of the Lord fast. A day of God. The day of God shall dissolve and destroy the world, the heavens and earth, the universe. But how? By fire. The believer is to wait expectantly and eagerly for this day to arrive. How? By living more holy and godly lives. So that more people readily be attracted to the Lord Jesus Christ by seeing our lives. That is how we are the light of the world. See, a sinner, a worldly person, he doesn't read the Bible. The only Bible he reads is you and I. And so when this transformed, changed life is revealed to the world in us and through us, that is going to attract more people readily to acknowledge Christ as their Lord too. And that is being witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is, uh, that happened when we live more and more holy and godly lives. So holiness and godliness have a missionary aspect. Because that is going to attract people towards Jesus Christ. Strength to conquer trials and temptations. Hope in the future. Assurance and confidence of living forever. 
conviction purpose meaning and significance of life love joy and peace and when people around us see these things active in us they will be attracted to christ more quickly than they would by simply hearing a sermon and remember by merely listening to a sermon a person is not convinced but when they see these wonderful uh, qualities or shall we say fruit in us this is what is going to draw people to jesus christ knowing that if we could experience it certainly they too can experience it and these are the things they long for because these are the things that money cannot buy riches or influence cannot uh, bring it to you these are the things that only come through our faith in jesus christ and our committed life for him these are the things they 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 long for oh yes they will pay anything in order to get them if they could buy but unfortunately these cannot be bought and so you are the possessor of this amazing riches that comes from the lord jesus christ to us verse 13 says he is going to make a new heaven and a new earth in isaiah chapter 65 behold i will create new heavens and a new earth the former things will not to be remembered nor will they come to mind this is a promise of god that he would make everything new including heavens and the earth the occupants of a new heaven are righteous who are free from the pollution of a sin and its power and so therefore the believers must be found spotless clean pure and unsoiled to have no dirt or contamination of a sin that's the way a believer must live believer must be found blameless to be faultless above a reproach illustration you know there i heard about the story of a boy who was checking on himself he was working as a gardener so one day this boy went outside and from a public telephone he called his boss the house owner for whom he was working and he told them sir do you need a gardener i want to offer myself and uh, the owner of the house said no i don't need it i already have one but sir are you satisfied with him uh, is he okay is he working properly and the owner said yes yes he is a very honest boy and he works very hard and i am so, so very satisfied with his work and then he put the receiver down phone down what was he doing he was checking on himself he did not reveal who he was and when he heard his boss saying that he was happy at least i am satisfying him and we as god's people need to do some checking ourselves once in a while how are we doing 
in the sight of God. What does God think of us? What does God, uh, God's opinion about us? There are many ways we can check it. Sit down with God's word and compare our behavior and our actions and uh, the way, the motive for which we do what we are doing. And check it with the God's word. And if it is in conformity with God's word, then you can be happy and praise the Lord and be humble. And my dear friends, the third thing is a believer must be found in peace. That's what our passage says. Live in peace and enjoy that peace. Let that peace abide in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 Finally brothers goodbye Aim for perfection Listen to my appeal Be of one mind Live in peace And the God of love and peace Will be with you And when we live a life That pleases God Having all the characteristics of Of Jesus himself what is the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is actually the character of Jesus. That must be visible in us. We will be in perfect peace. My brothers and sisters, may this meditation this morning really enlighten you, strengthen you, and uh, set you that you may go forward with confidence. Praising God and thanking God for his grace to live such a life. And thus speed up the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. And you depend on God and the Holy Spirit is there to help you. And may the joy of the Lord fill your heart. Amen.